world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Good morning, Julia. I have to say, uh, I, I am I am fed up is the wrong phrase because I'm horrified, but but fed up with, with reading yet again about another child, whether it's a baby, whether it's a young child, a toddler, uh, like a little Bella Ray, being mauled to death by a dog. And I'll tell you what, as soon as I see a story like that, I say to myself, I wonder what that dog looked like. I wonder if that dog was a was a golden retriever. I wonder if it was a collie. I wonder if it was one of the many other dogs. No, we know we may, we don't know whether it was a, a dangerous dog or not. But we, the dog has been put down. But neighbours said it was a Staffordshire Bull Terrier or a Pit Bull type breed. Now, I've met m- many many people who own those dogs, who are lovely people, who 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 own those dogs, look after those dogs, and those dogs have never bitten or attacked anybody. Why is it always this type of dog when we see a front page story about a child being mauled to death? Why is it always one of those dogs if they're so safe? Well, the thing is, Julia, um, you know, there are lots of stories of other types of dogs having bitten. Um, Recent research, in fact, has looked into the fact you mentioned golden retrievers as to whether uh, a a staffy type dog is actually more aggressive innately than, say, a golden retriever or, say, the, the family Labrador. And in fact, you know, science proves that the triggers that make these dogs bite are no different. So, in fact, a staffy is no more inherently definitely going to be more aggressive than a Labrador, for example. Now, and, and, yet, and yet I don't recall in all of my years in journalism ever seeing a front page story about a child being mauled to death by a Labrador or a Golden Retriever or a Collie. I, I'm sorry, I've never seen one. No, I know, but these... So why? Um, in, so, so what's so going what? on? So the reason a dog will bite is down to breeding, down to their early socialisation, down to um, the the uh, experience of the people owning their dogs, to understanding triggers that can set dogs um, off to perhaps bite. All dogs can bite, Julia. So it, it's really wrong to suggest that certain types of dogs are more likely to bite than others. And, and really, all the animal welfare organisations from the RSPCA, the Blue yeah. Cross, Battersea to the Kennel Club, are really endorsing the fact that it is deed, not breed. Now, as you say, we know very little about this dog, very little indeed. We know that the dog was not young, it was an adult. We know that the dog had only been in the home for a week. Um, We don't know who owned the dog previously. So, you know, to really... um, you know, condemn certain types of dogs um, is is not um, the right way. To, but it, but it is, is, is there not an issue that actually that you're part of this is that the, the the jaws on these types of dogs are just so strong that they're just impossible to sort of to break open if they do bite. So other dogs will bite at the same rate, maybe, but they, it's it's the strength of the jaw that causes the damage. Well, there is a very um, big urban myth that when a staffy bites, it, um, it, it locks its jaws. Yeah. That is actually incorrect. Oh, okay. Um, OK. Now, you know, all dogs, particularly terriers, have a prey drive, um, and this was a terrier. Um, so, you know, we all know that little Jack Russells can be quite feisty. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, the, the main point here is to understand the... Um, it's about responsible dog ownership. Yeah. And and well, it really that's is it. About and, and, education. And, and, indeed. Well, we're in no way are we criticising uh, the parents of, of Bella Ray Birch. My God, they've gone through enough. Um, this is Treshawn Bates and Ryan Birch. They've also got a, a young son uh, as well. But they took the dog in only a week ago. They've got a 17 month old and, and, a, and a, a young lad as well. Now, if you went to a dog um, a dog's home and you said, "I'd like to have a a, a, a dog that's you know a, a, that is a, a, in a dog's house, a dog's home," you would, if you had children, they would not allow you to have a dog that they could not one hundred percent guarantee um, it's what what its previous life had been. You, you'd, you'd have to have a puppy that they they knew they absolutely knew its history. I know my mum's always had rescue dogs, and and certainly one of her dogs. I mean, he's wonderful now. I went to bite my daughter the very first time we we met him. We had to you know lock him in the kitchen. Because he obviously had he'd had a horrifically violent past, um, and now is just most gloriously happy, safe dog in the world. But needed to, you know needed to have years of love and trust to, to get that way. But it, it is irresponsible for anyone to take in a new dog to the home unless they know for sure that dog has come from a very happy home. And even a happy dog brought into a home with young children could feel under threat. I mean, you know, they don't know that a dog, that, a, that someone who's coming up and touching them um, or pulling their tail is not a threat. So I mean, we, we've got to get the message out. You cannot bring dogs into a home with young children unless you really know what you're doing. 
Well, this is it, you know, and, and people vary in experience with their dogs. And we don't know if this um, dog had ever seen a toddler before, you know, and, yeah. um, you know, their prey drive kicks in. Dogs are dogs. And I think part of the problem at the moment, you know, during this puppy pandemic boom that we've seen through the pandemic, you know, it's almost like a dog is a must have accessory now. Yeah. Um, you know, people aren't really understanding the commitment that a dog is or their needs and the fact that they're not little people and they don't understand the word no <laughs> because they don't understand speech and we do really need to pay attention to understand what dogs are saying okay. to us in dog language and when you see these there's a ladder of aggression where dogs give you a sign there's um, up to a hundred tiny body signals that dogs offer to show you that they're a little stressed in a, in a situation feeling a bit overwhelmed and they might react which yeah. is kind of self-defense for them yeah. to a degree I, I've got, I'm, I've not, got a, yeah. I'm not no. undenying that this is a tragic situation and I do feel for this family and nothing could have been worse no. I, I can't imagine it myself um but i i feel that um you know to condemn um under section one these four breeds it's not really looking at the bigger picture no, I, I do accept that but i i oh, do think people i mean again i don't know why anyone thinks they've got a couple of young kids that yeah bringing a dog in is going to make life easier i mean uh, it, for, for anybody it's an absolute trash i wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy but we are we're going to have to educate people more about you know you cannot bring in a dog you just don't know the history of into your home when you've got young children you just can't do it it's not safe uh anna webb dog behaviorist or a host of a dog's life podcast thank you for that really quick good talk, talk. Bold talk. talk radio. listen on your smart speaker watch it live on your smart tv the world headquarters of common sense Talk Radio.